let's go ahead and get started. Sorry for running a little bit behind. Um, let's go back one. Uh, so this is my clinic, the Innate Healthcare Institute. We specialize in stem cell medicine and functional medicine. And this topic today is regenerative medicine with med uh, mesenchymal stem cells, specifically umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cells um, and exosomes. And today's talk, we're gonna focus a little more on longevity, anti-aging. Uh, if anybody needs that again, we can always do it after the, the end of the talk too. But we wanna shoot for about 40 minutes now um, of, of me presenting and we'll try to leave some questions and um, answering at the end. So a little bit about me, uh, my, bio my biography, I was born and raised in Florida. Um, I studied at the University of West Florida where I got an undergraduate in psychology with a minor in philosophical and religious studies. I spent a little time in the army, moved to the Pacific Northwest where I went to med school at the National University of Natural Medicine. Uh, got my doctorate and master's in, uh, doctorate in medic uh, naturopathic medicine with a master's in uh, integrative medical research. And then I did another master's program here in Phoenix uh, for Chinese medicine. Um, so pretty early on in my career, I, I started focusing in my training, I started focusing on regenerative medicine specifically, uh, both with biologics and also with things like bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Um, so I've done a lot of training uh, uh, here's a little more about me. I don't love talking about myself, um, but there it is. I do a lot of uh, regenerative medicine training. I also uh, train other clinics. I do a lot of it in practice. It's pretty much primarily what our practice does. Um, I help other clinics uh, train how to perform regenerative medicine treatments as well. Um, I'd say the only little minor conflict of interest for me is I'm the founder of a clinic that does regenerative medicine, but I don't own any stock or, or, or have any ownership in like labs that make stem cells or anything like that. Uh, so our regenerative medicine process is entirely done in house. Um, another clinic may order stem cell products from a commercial lab and we produce everything in house. So, um, a big thing that you'll, you'll, you'll want to know later, and that uh, document, five things you need to know about stem cell therapy, that's, that's a lot bigger than you think it is. Um, and you'll find out a little later why. Um, so when, we, when it comes to talking about regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, uh, you gotta think, you know, what, what's at stake? Like, why should I even go through this? Why would I even wanna do this? Um, you probably all have your own ideas for, for why you're even here for this talk, but um, uh, many consider aging as a disease and they consider it should be treated as such. Uh, a really popular uh, scientist, uh, David Sinclair from Harvard, uh, wrote a really popular book on aging, how in his mind and in his lab, they're starting to show that we could, it's not only very probable that you could slow it down drastically, but maybe even start to reverse it. Um, so a lot of people, when, it, when they come to us for, for aging or that you start thinking anti-aging, it's, you know, what can you get back? What is it that you've, you've lost maybe that you want to gain? Uh, exercise, golfing, sports, playing with kids, grandkids, traveling, uh, things like that. And even in some just like a zest for life, you know, some people are just tired all the time and that's enough for them. Um, so the, here's what we're talking about. Here's our... Our, our big player, uh, mesenchymal stem cells. So stem cells are, are, are made in every tissue in our body. Um, so this is a very, very specific type of stem cell that we're talking about. And this needs to be clarified if you are considering stem cell therapy. Um, uh, stem, cell ther stem cells is just a very overarching umbrella term. You gotta get really down to if you're using a biological product for anti-aging or to repair a joint or to regrow hair, an autoimmune disease, uh, you need to define what biologic you're using. And in this case, we're only talking about mesenchymal stem cells um, as opposed to um, maybe say adipose derived where they take it out of your fat tissue um, or bone marrow. There's different kinds of stem cells that come from bone marrow. 
So, um, let me see, I thought there was one more. So how they work, um, this is the short Cliff Notes version. Um, control inflammation, they help modulate the immune system, uh, they stimulate regeneration in tissues, and uh, they even have a factor where they can reduce scarring of tissue, which is really big, especially in injuries and in joints where once you have an issue or an injury and that is healed, it can create scarring and that can limit uh, the mobility um, and the healing process of that joint. Uh, so that's the Cliff Notes version. This is for the, the uh, nerdy people in the audience <laughs> that really, really want to know um, um, the ins and outs of mesenchymal stem cells. So this was an article wrote by uh, Dr. Arnold Kaplan and a couple of his associates up there. Uh, this was published, published in Nature, uh, the journal Nature. So in short, uh, these are uh, mesenchymal stem cells was the name I told, alluded to earlier. Dr. Kaplan is the one that discovered them and named them decades ago. And he has changed his stance and his position on these to where he wants to refer to them as medicinal signaling cells, because that's what this type of biological, this type of cell does. It, it picks up cell, uh, signals from the environment it recognizes a problem, it makes medicine, and it signals the surrounding cells to heal specifically. That is why he wants to change the name to a medicinal signaling cell. So they, they initiate our own body's innate healing process. Uh, this has been going on since day one in all of us, as we'll get to a little early, or, or a little later. This has been going on since day one in all of us. We have mesenchymal stem cells all in our bodies right now. The aging process becomes complicated because we lose a lot of these cells. And that's why healing uh, becomes harder. Uh, that's why one of the main reasons why we think aging occurs, there's a bunch of different factors, environmental factors, genetic factors, but one of the biggest one is that we start to lose our store of mesenchymal stem cells or medicinal signaling cells. So we just call them MSCs for short. Um, so here's, um, here's a little bit more about these wondrous cells. Um, they're literally the regenerative building blocks in our body. If I get a small cut right now, uh, things like platelets and stuff like that, other cells are contributing to clotting up and healing that, cl healing that injury, but it's the, it's the MSCs that are the first responders to any kind of injury whether that be uh, something obvious like a, like a cut or a wound or even an internal process such as our immune system um, turning into more of an autoimmune condition, attacking our own body. And another reason we know that because MSCs work great in autoimmune conditions. Um, a little more, um, oh no, don't hit power, don't turn off, okay. Um, a little more down on the bottom, um, this conference is a, or this talk is a little bit of uh, for healthcare providers, so the people that like to geek out on all the technical stuff, and it's a little more for like the layperson too. So there's a little bit of information uh, that's kind of jargony, very medically, because uh, I found a lot of my patients like that, um, and there's there's the Cliff Notes versions too throughout this. So. Uh, so what potential do they have? Uh, there's different species, stuff like uh, salamanders, hydra, different plants that, or different animals that have a higher concentration of stem cells naturally in their body. And we see that in how they regenerate with some animals even be able to have the capability to completely regenerate torn or lost limbs. Uh, one even has a ability to almost regen pretty much regenerate its whole body. So interestingly, some animal species are made up of much, much higher concentration of stem cells uh, than humans are. Um, so that's a, a great quote I found, and aging is a balance between entropy, um, which is basically um, the body breaking itself down, stress, stuff like that, um, and the rebuilding phase, which is where our stem cells come in. Um, if there's too much entropy, if there's too much stress, chaos, disorder, 
uh, we kind of get behind the curve, and that's what we think of it with accelerated aging. Uh, the stem cells can't keep up and they can't replace. Um, they, they can't regenerate as they once did. It's kind of obvious. Kids regenerate really quick, right? They're super resilient. <laughs> they fall. Uh, you get an injury as you're younger. Uh, you heal really quick. As we age, that process slows down. Um, so I alluded to a little bit earlier talking about the cell type that matters. So in, in humans, there's um, a lot, a lot of growing considerable evidence that the younger type of cells that you administer for a condition, whether it's an orthopedic condition, whether it's just frailty and aging, an autoimmune disease, um, autism, we treat a lot of autism at our clinic. Um, the younger the cells, the better the performance they have compared to using older type of cells, for instance, um, extracting them from our bone marrow or from our fat tissue. Uh, here's a little, so, uh, a little slide. Those are a little more interested in how um, the mechanism of how a stem cell works. Uh, exosomes are, were once thought to be a kind of a type of like a cellular waste when we first discovered them. They're very, very small. So this picture actually doesn't even do it justice. They're on, in the measurement of nanometers. Um, so when we first started looking into cellular biology and we could photograph and, and, and look at cells under, under microscopes, once we got more high-powered microscopes, we started to notice that there's things that these cells are secreting. And at first we had no idea what they were, and they thought of it, it was like cell waste. It was like the cell getting, getting rid of its waste, it didn't need anything. Well, it, comes to, it turns out um, these are actually exosomes. These are little packaged vesicles that have growth factors and proteins and uh, mRNA and mitochondrial RNA. So these are all little chemical messages that there are being sent into the environment that are telling cells, um, you know, do things like heal, make more certain types of proteins, uh, binding to different receptors um, on the outside of the cell, and um, basically giving little commands to, to the cell type to do things like maybe make more of a certain kind of a cytokine, which is a, a chemical messenger on our body. So where that cell may be turned on to make inflammatory cytokines, and now this exosome is telling it to make anti-inflammatory cytokines. So the biggest attributes, we, uh, we already hit that a little bit. What we didn't go over is um, they break down scar tissue. It's great because they have virtually no side effects if you know, if you know what you're doing. Um, antibacterial and antiviral properties is really cool. They make a very specific protein, I think it's called LL37, um, that has antibacterial and antiviral properties. Um, and they're immune privileged. So that's very important because a uh, common question I, I frequently get is, um, is a lot of patients are naturally are very scared. They say, well, if, I, if, if, if you're putting in some cells from another person, aren't I gonna have like a bad reaction? Like uh, um, what's called a graft versus host disease, where if you put an organ from somebody, from a donor, uh, they have to give you immuno immunosuppressants, right? They have to shut down your immune system because it will attack that organ. Uh, so the great thing about MSCs is they're immunoprivileged. They, uh, um, our immune system doesn't recognize them as something foreign and dangerous and, and automatically attack them. Uh, so the potential and longevity, uh, we see immune system, cardiac, uh, uh, neurological tissue, uh, articular cartilage, which is like our joints, our, our backs, knees, shoulders, stuff like that, um, skeletal muscle rejuvenation, so a lot of potential and um, even more work is constantly being done on this, on how much of our different types of tissues these cells can regenerate. Um, amino privileged, I, I hit on that. I usually hit on that a lot because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, another one I common, uh, commonly get, you see the second paragraph there, they do not induce tumorogenesis. So a lot of people think um, I, I think from reading articles or something that if you put these cells, this cell type into the body, like a tumor is going gonna, is gonna to grow or something. And um, it, it's not the case. Uh, you'll find that on the internet, there was an old, 
uh, somewhere in Europe, I feel like, I think they tried to take cartilage from a guy's nose and implant it into his spine to help his spine regrow. And five something years later, he ended up having to have more work done on his spine and they noticed there was a tumor that was growing there. So I think that gets like brush fired, it spreads that to think that all stem cell therapy means that you can have tumors. Um, it's not the case. It's actually a, a incredibly safe therapy. Uh, exosomes we talked about, um, delivery, these are the chemical messengers delivering uh, material to other cells. Um, why allogenic versus autologous? So these are two terms you'll come across if you're researching uh, stem cell therapy. Allogenic means from another source and autologous means from your own source, your own source. So an, an autologous treatment would be taking my bone marrow cells and then putting them back in me. An allogenic treatment would be taking cells from um, a, an umbilical cord, we take those cells and then you put it into a different person. Uh, so we do allogenic treatments. We take donated umbilical cords. They're screened for gosh, all kinds of infectious diseases. Screened twice. Uh, the mother is screened as well for a health history and, um, and biologically for her own health. And then those cords are the, get, end up being used to extract the cells from. Um, so another reason uh, cell type matters and the source of the cell type is from an autologous uh, a treatment, so a bone marrow or an adipose, if I was to take those cells from you and want to use them, let's just say you had a, um, we were using it for longevity or to restore your joint health. Um, numbers is an issue, so autologous treatments, bone marrow and adipose, all of our cells are a lot lower than at, at that one point when we were, especially when we were younger, but even now through our 20s, 30s, and 40s, especially as you get into your 50s, 60s, and 70s and older, uh, they drop exponentially. So there's not a high yield is what we would say. We're not, get, we're not drawing from a high source. Um, also what we call their viability. So how, how well these cells work, um, they decrease as well. No offense, your, your cells just aren't working as good as they used to. Neither are mine. Uh, so here's, the, here's that number. Um, so a newborn, one in every uh, 10,000, uh, one in every 10,000 cells is an MSC. Uh, and you can see how exponentially they drop uh, by your teens, your 30s, your 50s, and onward to where, you know, us, we have somewhere between one in every half million to two million of our cells is an MSC. So you can see how we start losing that regenerative capability. Uh, here's just a stance from Health and Human, Ser uh, human Services. Uh, virtually any condition that results from malfunctioning damage or failing tissues may be potentially improved through regenerative medicine therapies. Um, the concept of tissues for life is uh, a very beautiful one for me. I told you earlier I have a background in Chinese medicine. And in Chinese theory, there's this concept of yin and yang, um, of recycle and in, um, of opposites and, and, and comparisons. Uh, so a yang substance would be like the sun. And to compare that would be a yin, which would be like a moon. Uh, so I like this tissues for life because it's, it's as we age, we can take these umbilical cords that are donated and we can use this, we can repurpose these to provide either for that family or for other people uh, once they start aging. So I think it's a really nice cycle of life kind of uh, thing. Um, so um, stem cell therapies have been around for decades. So when did they kind of start noticing that um, it might be able to um, play into helping somebody become younger basically? Um, this was a really fascinating, mildly cruel, sorry for the, <laughs> for the picture, but um, experiment. They sewed the blood vessels of two mice together and the older mouse got younger and the younger mouse got older. And they started to try to figure out, well, well what, what is it? It's gotta be something in the blood, obviously, because um, 
that's the only thing they're sharing. They kept diet and everything the same. Um, so after a while, they, they ended up, um, um, I guess, extrapolating. They ended up coming to the conclusion that it, it must be the exosomes. It's that this high, this young mouse has a way, way higher amount of stem cells that are producing exosomes, and this, this older mouse is getting younger and vice versa. Uh, so how do they work? Um, this could be an hour-long presentation in itself. Um, some more cliff notes kind of thing of them. We already talked about them decreasing inflammation. Uh, another big point on how they work when it comes to aging specifically is clearing senescent cells. So senescent cells are basically when our, our cells get old enough that they stop dividing and they stop making new cells to contribute to this community. Um, so these cells are hanging around, they're not dividing, they're not contributing, and please don't make fun of me. <laughs> um, it's true, this is a community. Um, so they're, they're taking up resources, they're, they're taking up space, and one of the properties they found that these stem cells can contribute to is getting rid of these old cells uh, so that the younger MSCs can divide and make a healthier, younger population. Um, let's see, we talked about providing signals, uh, mitochondrial transfer. So the mitochondria in our cell is our, if you remember back in like biology class, is, it's the powerhouse. They, get, they assign different jobs or something to the, to the cell, to the different organs inside of a cell. And that's the powerhouse, that's where a lot of our energy are made. So very fascinating, uh, MSCs contribute mitochondria to different cells around them. So they're li literally giving them uh, the little factory they need to make more energy. Um, and another one uh, that, that I found fascinating, this is kind of newer, is assisting in the proper gut microbiota. So again, with this community, what we really are are made up of complete, we're made up of a lot more different organisms that we, than what actually makes us us. So we have on the order of billions of cells that make us our cells. We have trillions, hundreds of trillions of bacteria in us. Uh, so they, uh, bacteria in our skin, our eyes, our, our GI system vastly outnumber us. They play a huge, huge influence from hormones to neurotransmitters to inflammation in our body. So it was fascinating that, that MSC therapy also um, assists in making sure we have the proper organisms in our gut. A lot more goes into that too, of course, like diet and lifestyle. Uh, but it's fascinating that that's another, reason, that's another area that they contribute to. Um, so a little bit more for um, uh, the nerds, if you really, really want to uh, suss out at how these uh, cells are communicating with each other. Uh, they do so by uh, cytokines and growth factors. Um, so now we're going to get into a little bit more of uh, some of the studies and research that has actually been done out there using this kind of cells for a therapy. Um, so this was a double-blinded, uh, randomized, controlled study um, where they gave elderly, frail individuals um, different doses of 20 million, 100 million, or 200 million stem cells. And they looked for safety, of course, uh, as, as one of the as one of their conclusions and their outcomes. Um, but they also looked for how uh, performance, how they, you know, uh, their measures in frailty improved. And I want to say something like 90 something percent all significantly improved um, physical performance and their biomarkers. So like blood drawing blood to see like how much inflammation they had in their body improved. And so a side note, Inflammation is a whole nother talk on its own, but we're starting to see that an inflammatory process pretty much is the basis and makes up, makes up the basis for almost every kind of disease that we see out there from uh, autoimmune to neurological, Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, you name it, like in, in inflammation, excess inflammation plays a huge role. Um, so they saw the best outcomes with the, the group that received the 100 million uh, cells uh, dose 
And there was another separate study that showed, um, was looking at an anti-wrinkle effect um, and dermal density, so how thick uh, the, the skin was. And um, they saw a, a significant increase in growth of the skin as well. Um, so again, part of that age defying process of, of inflammation like we just talked about, um, inflammation increases as the disease process goes on and as we age. Uh, so there's been groups that have looked at uh, populations where the stem cells start to get lower and lower, and they see a lot more inflammation in those, in those groups. Uh, potential for MSC transplants to indirectly extend lifespan by slowing disease progression has been de demonstrated in a variety of different human diseases. Um, we've treated, I've never treated T-cell lymphoma, but we have treated ADLS and Crohn's disease. Uh, again, more research, uh, the treated group, you see had remarkable improvements in physical performance and inflammation again. So there's been quite a few um, studies done looking at stem cells being applied to an aging population. Um, again, more nerdy stuff if you're into it, um, to where they're looking at the how exactly, like the very specific how. And of course they think it has to do with a lot of other things that work in our body, which is gene expression. So these cells being able to dock next to a cell or by those exosomes, communicate with cells distant throughout our whole body and ramp up different uh, gene expressions. And yes, there, there is a gene called the ND gene, I-N-D-Y, called the I am not dead yet. Um, that is a real gene. <laughs> it, does, it does relate with life extension. Uh, this was one of our, uh, this is one of our patients, a very old patient. Um, I stick these in there because these are some of our, our really, really successful stories. Uh, so not only did he have uh, kidney disease, but he had um, uh, congestive heart failure. And he was told his only other option was to have a heart transplant. He had a moral issue, moral, moral issue, uh, with having a heart transplant because he didn't want to take a heart away from somebody else. Um, super nice, super sweet guy. Uh, so he didn't want a, a heart transplant. He was going to try to hold it off till as, as long as he possibly could. Um, he came and treated us. Uh, so uh, a, a, a healthy heart, we measure by, well, a lot of different ways we measure it, but one of the ways we measure it is, is ejection fraction. Uh, so how much blood it's pumping out and a normal ejection fraction, uh, healthy, I should say, not normal, is a healthy one is 56 to 78%, somewhere around theirs. Um, his was somewhere around 20%. Uh, once you start getting something below 30%, they, they start looking for uh, transplants for you. Um, his, I think within three months, increased to somewhere along the high 40%. Um, his lung function improved from 54 to 75%, and his kidney function went from a stage four to a stage three, which the higher you go in kidney disease is the worse. I didn't want you to think it got worse, like it was a lower number. Um, so normally when I give, um, I give this presentation on stem cell therapy in general, I've kind of modified it to aging and longevity for this talk. Um, so I left a couple of the stuff in there um, that I give in the normal presentation. So this is uh, a study that looked at MRI before and after to, to measure the cartilage growth after injecting stem cells into the knee. Um, we do a lot of uh, orthopedic injections. It works amazingly for it. Um, people, we, we have patients that can hardly walk. Or, or have almost pretty much lost the ability to walk without an assistance to going back to, um, some of them are still, are, are getting there, they're, they're definitely walking and their capabilities are way remarkable than when they first came into the clinic to people back to doing things they hadn't done in 20 years. Um, this was one of them, great orthopedic case. Um, 
severe pain in knees um, in one of her thumbs. It was mostly the knees that was the big problem because she could hardly walk anymore. She couldn't get, um, she couldn't get up and down from uh, playing with her grandkids. And that was like the sole purpose of why she even came to seek out uh, stem cell treatment. She didn't want a knee replacement because of the dangers of surgery and she didn't want to be out for like six months or whatever the surgeon told her uh, she'd have to be doing PT and stuff like that. So her life was her grandkids. Um, uh, so just after, even I want to say like, we did three total on her, I think. And I think even that's like the second one, um, uh, her pain was almost completely gone. She did go, she went back to golfing. Um, she hadn't golfed in years. She went back golfing eight, uh, 18 holes. Um, neuropathy is another common one we treat. Uh, so we talked about uh, differentiation of these cells. So these cells have an amazing capability of not only uh, being basically little, little doctors, little pharmacies in our body and making the medicine that we need to make, uh, they can also what we call differentiate or turn into other cell types. So uh, you put, uh, it's, it's kind of like a blank slate, like an empty canvas. You put these cells next to um, a cell type that they need to turn into and they'll turn into a nerve cell um, or a, car piece, a cartilage. Um, or bone. Bone is another uh, lineage that they're able to turn into. Uh, so uh, this was a result of a sub studies that um, showed them improving myelination and myelination is the, it's the stuff that's wrapped around a cell. It's the reason it gets to conduct. It's because basically like an electrical wire or a nerve tissue is. Um, so it's Im important to know that not only can it grow nerve tissue, but it grows the myelination that surrounds the nerve tissue so that it can send that nerve impulse between whatever, your toe and your brain. Um, blood vessel growth, you know, there's so many different factors that go into our body functioning, nerves and hormones and uh, sugar, glucose or fatty acids. Of course, we need a blood supply too. So fascinating study looked at um, some blood vessels before implanting uh, MSCs and then after um, implanting. Uh, so again, this is why healing occurs because blood vessels are... are what the purpose of study? Um, uh, we'd have to, I'd have to look. I didn't put the dang note behind it. It'll probably be in the sources at the end. Um, I'm getting a mild flashback of like USC or somewhere in Southern California because um, that's all I do is read research papers and they all get jumbled in my brain. Um, but this is fascinating because even in, from a Chinese medical theory, um, their ancient text basically said like, if there's no blood, uh, you're, you're gonna have pain or you're gonna have disease. Uh, so even then they knew a long, long time ago that you, you need blood to an area to have it to thrive. Uh, so the homing mechanism, that's one we haven't uh, talked about. So we've talked about implanting these cells in our body and then picking up on the environment, what chemicals, messengers are being sent through our body and then making their own medicine. We've talked about them changing into different cell types where, the, where if needed. Um, homing mechanism is another fascinating thing with these cells is they're able to pick up on these signals that these distress signals basically that the other cells are making and they've traveled to different parts of the body uh, to assist those cells it's really fascinating they've recorded that in i know i don't know if they've, they've done it in human brain studies i have a couple of those but they've also they've mostly done in a lot of mice studies uh, where they make a small incision or a wound or something inject it through the rat's tail and they trace like using radioactive isotopes those cells and watch them go into the site of injury Um, so again, this, this is, it's this compounding the idea of, um, you've lived a long life, you've worked really hard. Um, a lot of people out there have the mindset that aging is what it is. Once you get to a certain age, that's all that can be done. Um, there's others where I'm in more of that boat that, um, that's in today's, with today's technology and, and advances, it, that's not where it has to end. There are stuff out there. Um, besides, besides this, there's diet, exercise, there's a lot more medications that are becoming more and more um, abundant for 
anti-aging. Kind of, I kind of get stuck with that word. I don't really like anti-aging. I try to use longevity, um, maybe slowing progression. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with a new word, but you can't really anti-age. You're going to age, but you're going to do it slowly. You're going to do it more refinedly, I guess. Um, so our only contraindication, we, we mentioned how safe this is. Our only contraindications to this, uh, cancer is one, um, especially a melanoma. If you've had a recent melanoma, I highly, highly, highly do not suggest you get a stem cell therapy um, unless it's at least one year out. Um, a bone marrow dysplasia or sickle cell disease, uh, primary pulmonary hypertension, an acute bacterial infection, uh, they don't rec uh, recommend it. Recent dental work, macular de degeneration with neovascularization, so a very specific type of macular de degeneration. Um, uh, any normal neovascularization, so anywhere where n new blood vessels could look like it's a tumor or something growing. Um, reason being is very obvious, as we talked about this whole time, regenerating tissue. Um, growing tissue, you don't want the cells to be hijacked and regrow the wrong type of tissue. So that's why it's, it's really, to be safe, you don't want to do it if there's any type of cancer or recent cancer, even though melanoma is the only cancer type that has definitely shown to literally suck in and abduct mesenchymal stem cells and use them for their growth. MSCs have cancer anti-cancer properties, um, but it's still, it's just one of those things where you don't, you, just to be safe. Um, and immunocompromised, they have such a profound influence on the immune system. If you have somebody that's on high doses of steroids or other medications, that's basically shutting that immune system down, um, you prob it's probably not a good idea to have stem cell therapy. Are you saying those are conditions that can't be regenerated? Cor no, these are conditions, contraindications, so they're ones you probably don't you want to have a very good long talk with your doctor if you want a stem cell therapy and you have one of these or have had one. I wouldn't treat um, the infections ones I'm not too scared of, but again, cancer, I wouldn't treat and never have treated anybody with cancer with stem cell therapy. Um, if they had a cancer, I would make, they would have to be six months cleared Unless it was a melanoma, it would have to be longer than a year um, for me to treat them. So let me say back to you, for example, if you've had recent dental work, you better get it checked. It may take a while for it to work. I don't get, yeah, the recent dental work, the recent dental work is one that you could wait like a week or two until you had, if you had dental work, wait a couple weeks and then get stem cell therapy. I think that one is up there. This is all collected from different sources. I think th whoever put recent dinner work is focusing on, you don't want the cells to migrate and home in on the dinner work you've had. If you're trying to use it for a different purpose. So you gotta wait a while. You gotta wait, yeah, you just gotta wait. Uh, sources, sources, sources. And there's that scan if you need it. Oh, let's put that back up. Okay, perfect, wow, right on the button. Um, questions? <laughs>